So it's Monday at the farmhouse. We have projects galore. You can see the Zeb is already covered in his man glitter. Sawdust all over the place. We've got to trim out the front door over here because that's been neglected, but it's going to work out all right. We have some electrical going and flooring, and we're going to be working on this bench because you guys have told me you want to see some of the projects I'm completing for the farmhouse. So I thought, whew, there's a fly. I thought in between the farmhouse project, I can get coats of paint on the furniture I know I want to put in here. I picked up this piece for $40 on Facebook Marketplace. I think that was a phenomenal price for a great church pew. I don't love the yellow orangey oak, so it's going to be getting some milk paint today. But first things first, I gotta wipe it down. All right, so sorry for the background noise. That's what happens when you're working in a construction zone. I've got farmhouse finishes in Snow White. It's the exact same as Sweet Pickens flower sack, only it's made to not crack and chip and doesn't require bond. I've got my paint pixie brush here and I'm gonna get the first coat on and see how it covers. Don't be surprised if the first coat doesn't look good because usually it takes two coats to really start enjoying it. Sometimes it gets a little streaky. It is possible that there will be bleed through because this is a yellow oak. If I happen to see any bleed through, I'm just gonna spot treat that. I didn't wanna prime the whole thing because I'm hoping I get some chipping and crackle, even though it's not the same as traditional milk paint and it does chip and crackle less. Generally speaking, if you wet distress it, you can get a little bit of good chippy. This pew has a ton, a ton of shellac and I was worried if I used traditional milk paint, it would all chip off, especially on the arms were super, super shiny. This is the exact same paint that I used to paint my floor. So I'm probably gonna do a little touch up while I have the paint mixed up. A lot of people have asked me how my floors have worn. They've actually held up great, especially considering that this is a construction zone. They're dusty, they're dirty. The only part we have any chipping is where the floorboards are not perfectly steady because we have no subfloor. So it's just cracking along those lines. And I actually really love that look. It's just a warm, warm look to have a little bit of cracking on the sides. So snow melt dripping off, you can see right where I'm going to need to have my gutter system in place so that I'm not dealing with a ton of uh, water just right here as you try to get in the entryway. Right now I'm putting the finish siding on here and we're gonna get this door wrapped up. I'm gonna run some electrical through here that we need to do. That way we can close this off and it's gonna need insulated as well. Might leave that open for the four way, we'll see. I might be able to only do this door. I'll have to call my inspector and be like, hey, can I just close this front part up and see how much they care about that. We've also got beadboard right here, old house, right? I've saved these boards that I took off from back where we tore off the old addition and the mudroom. And I just need to fill those in right there. So we'll see if I can get that done today too. Up on the ladder, doing some caulking 
basket while paint dries. I'm gonna fill all these seams and I'll probably continue the board and batten look over to here and just space it out. But I've got a trim up this way here. So we'll see how much I can actually fit. I might actually only get one batten in there. In the no, you'll notice Jamie's uh, fun glove that she uses on this exterior caulking job. I don't think it was originally my glove. I actually think it was Tyrell's. Yeah, he did. He did use it a lot for that. Show him, show him the whole glove. <laughs> it gives you authentic texture to match what's on the siding itself. While Jamie's doing that, I mentioned that I had some of this beadboard saved. I'm gonna go start cutting that to length. I've got a few pieces selected. They're in pretty rough shape, but I think they'll work to match this old part of the house and really tie the addition to the old part. So here in Utah, we get sunshine and snow. Comment below if that happens where you live. Seb is at Home Depot, so I'm gonna get started painting this entryway. I'm not used to recording myself. I just turn it on again. Hey, that looks good though. Looks like it needs a little touch up, but it's cold well, out I'm here. Well, I'm gonna need so. a second coat, but I mean, well, I didn't realize I'm gonna have to do a lot of caulking. So when it dries, I'm gonna do caulking. Or I might just touch it up and then do caulking tomorrow and paint over the caulk. Okay. It's okay. Cause there's but, caulk underneath that crack, but I feel like it'll look better. It's almost looking like an entryway. Yeah, if we do caulk there, were you able to find that light fixture one? They did not have it that I saw. They're out of a Were lot of things. Were you in the out exterior light fixture section? Yeah. Okay, maybe they don't have it. All right, second coat goes on. We'll see how well it covers. Usually I need like three coats with white, but I might get away with two. We will see. Sandpaper, and I'm going to give this a good distress, and then I'm probably going to do a little wet distressing, then clear wax. Okay, so, next up, I have a damp rag, and I'm just going to wet distress. This can cause it to get chippy because we're getting the milk paint wet. But I like it because I feel like it kind of gives it an even, non splotchy kind of distress. Doesn't look like I used a sander. Final step, I'm gonna go ahead and use some DIY clear wax and my JRV stencil brush that can also wax. I'll have Zeb put the links to all the products so you guys know where to find them. You can also use Sweet Pickens beeswax and achieve a similar look. When I'm doing white pieces like this that I know are gonna potentially have bleed through, I like to use clear wax because anytime you use a liquid top coat, you're more likely to pull the bleed through all the way through the paint than you are with clear wax. So 
So when you first put your wax on it, it's gonna look kind of splotchy and see-through, but as that wax dries, it will get less see-through and will buff it really smooth in the morning. So I hope you guys liked today's video, a little bit of farmhouse, a little bit of painting. So I'm just gonna put all the links in the description box for the products I use. So I've been doing some re-plumbing today. If you ask my dad, it's his least favorite thing to do on construction, and now I know why. Mike came over and he was like, hey, you got this one little spot you need to probably touch up, so I'm working on that. We got the front entryway almost finished. I got the first coat of paint on, and I did some flooring. Make sure you guys are hitting up jamierayvintage.com for the paint and products that I use today, and jrvhome.com for clothes and home decor that we sell. Both those websites help support our channel. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.